recently I've been spending the past year traveling around Peru giving workshops to teachers and student teachers on how to use uh, comic books in their classrooms. And one of the uh, workbooks we've been using is um, published by the um, Relo office here. It's called uh, Why English? Comics for the Classroom. And that features um, comics from, so here it is here. That features is Why English? You guys, some of you out there might have seen it. And that features comics by um, Peruvian students. So let me show you some here. So we've been traveling around Peru giving workshops on that. And at the same time, we've been collecting new comics uh, from Peruvian students and teachers. And that was that previous image you guys saw. That's the other scene right now, Zonk Comics. So that's, that's going to be coming out in October, we hope. And that's going to be a great resource. And part of this webinar is to talk about you know, how to use comics and what you're going to get when Zonk is published and um, you know, some of the resources uh, available in that. And so, so one of the one of the things I thought um, would would be interesting for all of you to know, because all of you went to Arizona, is um, the fact that Ben is from Arizona. That's right. I'm I'm from Tucson, so I'm from about two hours south of where where you all uh, studied in the uh, slightly smaller town uh, from Phoenix. So yeah. And. I thought it would be very interesting to start with a question for you, a little quiz, since all of you should be experts on Arizona now. So just for fun, to get us started while we're waiting for other teachers to log in and join us, please fill out the answer to this question. This is just for fun. Yeah, no, no pressure. Which river <laughs> flows through the Grand Canyon? Is it the Phoenix River, the Colorado River? The Mississippi River or the Tucson River? So please click on whichever answer you think is correct and click Submit. Okay, some of you are yeah. saying Colorado, some Phoenix, some Tucson. No Mississippi, that's well, uh, nope. Mississippi. <laughs> okay, 60% <laughs> of you have voted. We want everybody to vote, so please Please click on the answer when you have a chance. Okay, we'll give you five more seconds. Four, three, two, one. The poll is complete. And I'm going to close it and share it with you. So let's review the answer. 63% of you said Colorado, and ding, 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 you're correct. The Colorado River is the river that flows through the Grand Canyon that creates that beautiful uh, landscape. Um, to my knowledge, there is no Phoenix River, no Tucson River. There is the Mississippi River, but that's in a very different location on the eastern side of the United States. No, the river in Tucson is called the Rio, Rialto, but oh. it's dry. <laughs> All right. So, some more of you have joined us now. Um, we have another question to ask you to kick this webinar off. And this question is the following. Do you use comics in the classroom? Because why are we here today? We're here to learn as much as possible from Ben, who again is a professional comic illustrator, that, and he created with the help of uh, a local comic book artist, Fabricio Rivas, uh, Zonk, which we'll learn more about. Yeah. OK, so the possible answers are, yes, I use comic books in the classroom seldomly. Yes, frequently. No, nunca jamás. Or no, but I might if you show me how. Good. That's what we're here to do. <laughs> OK, well, people are still voting. We'll give five more seconds. Four, three, two, one. And let's share the results. Okay. So, 32%. That's surprising, actually. Yeah, that's no, really good. You guys are already using 
comic books. Well done. Only 5% do it frequently, 5% never ever, and about 60% no, but you're willing to. So yeah. this is for you guys. Yeah. So I'm, I'll just recap real quick because it looks like we have a couple more people. So we're I'm going to talk about why comics are useful in the classroom. And I'll go through a quick few ideas of why that is, and then we're going to do an exercise, actually use some comic books and give you guys um, – kind of a really short lesson plan that you can use uh, in your classrooms, and we'll give you a, a comic strip that you can use for that. Um, so all of that will be available in this in Zonk Comics, which is the flyer you're seeing up on the screen now. And so one of the reasons comics are so um, kind of dynamic is that they're kinetic, that you do the action when you're reading a comic book. Um, and it's shown that when students are actually doing something, or when anyone's doing anything, um, you take a lot more ownership over something and you care more about it and you learn better. Um, and so the act of reading a comic is actually uh, kinetic. You're actually doing the action. And for an example, I want to uh, show you guys um, an image and then um, I'm going to have we're going to do a poll and you guys are going to answer the question. And uh, and then we'll then we'll talk about you know the results from that. But first, I want to talk about a little bit about what comics are made up of. So in any comic. You can go to the top one, yeah, there. So in any comic, you have, let me see here, I'll give you an example here. So in any comic, you have the panels, right? Oop, okay, there you have the panels. And then this area in between is what we call the gutter. So you have one thing happening, and then the next thing happening. And the magic of comics is actually in between right here, in the gutter. And the gutter is, you know, the area on the side of a road where all the water goes. And the gutter is actually in comics where all the action happens. And we, co we call that action between one thing and, an, and another image, one image and another image, closure. And the amount of closure varies. But closure is when we t look at two things and we pull them together. And that's exactly what comics do. So if you have in one image a uh, image of a, a boy eating an ice cream, and the next image you have a uh, image of the ice cream on the ground and the boy crying, well, your, bot, your mind pulls together the fact that that boy's ice cream fell on the ground and he started crying. And in your mind, you do that. And that's, that's, that's the doing part rather than passively receiving a comic. It's, a, um, it's a, uh, a participatory reading experience, opposed to, say, film, which is broadcasted for you. And though in film, it is tons of little images, and there is a little bit of closure, but way, way less because so much image is being given to you, whereas comics are given, you're given less information and your mind pulls it together. And so let's show you a quick uh, example here, and I'll read this panel for you. Is Okay, so this is a panel from uh, EC Comics, which is a, a comics out of the 60s. And I'll, I'll read it to you, but you guys can read it to yourself also. Um, it says, he brushed against the razor blades, slashing his flesh. He stumbled and got up and ran on, frightened, wild, down through the twisted doubling back maze corridors with the razor-lined walls and the slobbering hound close behind. All right, so we're going to publish a poll now, and what I want you to do is look at the answers and pick the best one, what you think happens next. It's quite simple. There's no wrong answer except Mississippi River. All right. So go ahead and choose the answer that you think happens next in the story of the image with the dog appearing to run after a pair of feet, Yeah. <laughs> which probably belongs to a man. Oh, wow, look at that. Okay. Wow, this is... All right. It's, yeah. it's a neck and neck between two different options. We'll, we'll share the results momentarily. Yeah. So this is where, when you're reading, you're doing the action. And I almost got 60% of the votes, so everyone get in there. Because your last chance to vote. Please vote, everybody. You five, 10 seconds here. We almost got 100%. Eight. I'd be curious to see. This is interesting. Seven. You guys are all. Uh, six. Five. Four. Three. Two. One. Very interesting. Okay. Yeah, no, this is, this is good. So here are the results. So this, I've done this test all around, all around Peru, and you guys are easily the uh, most kind, <laughs> kind and, and, and nonviolent group I've worked with. Um, so we have here the results. Uh, zero said he was eaten by the dog. Well, that's that's pretty interesting. 
Um, 52% says he jumps over the wall and gets away. Zero uh, percent. The man stops, turns around, and pets his dog. <laughs> and then 48% wake up and it's all a dream. So that's good. That's good. Um, normally, the dog is eating the person, so you guys are pretty, uh, you're pretty nonviolent, nice, uh, calm people. Maybe in Arizona, they uh, they showed you a very peaceful, <laughs> yeah. a peaceful way to imagine things. So that's excellent. <laughs> okay, so next we're gonna scroll down, and I'm gonna show you. Are you guys ready? This is is kind of gory because we'll show you what happens next. Oh, okay. Oh, you want to? Show oh no, go yeah, go down there. Sorry. Oh, and then some idiot turned out the lights. So we'll never know. You know, that's that's your imagination, your head. You did all that action. So whether or not he jumped over the wall and got away, that was your choice. Whether or not he woke up and it was a dream, that's your choice. So you're doing that action, and that's closure. When you're given two things and you create the action and you create the uh, the uh, next the next moment in the story. And so that's just a, a small example of how comics are are interactive and in reading. Um, okay, let's move on now. The next, next thing I like about comics in the classroom is it um, promotes uh, group work. So you're going to see that in this next exercise we do is a lot of times in language classes it's difficult to get students to speak and to work together. If you put them in groups, A, you two things happen. One, you cut down your classroom size. So you might have 30 students in a class. When you group them up, you have 15 students technically. They can group together and work together. And it's more time for you to go around. Also, when they're working together, they're going to be talking to each other, and that's going to be promoting conversation time. A lot of comic book exercises are group activities. It's something that you work with another person, you know, as many people as you want. I find two to four to be ideal. And um, so it, it becomes a group activity, working on a comic book. And that leads, like I said, to more conversation time. And then next, next thing I want to say is, so the next example here, let me scroll down a little bit here is comics are written in colloquial language. And now here's an example, you guys all know Mafalda, I'm sure. I'll let you guys give you a minute to read this. This one's in, in Spanish because I just think it's a really good example, especially for presumably many native Spanish speakers out there. I'll give you a minute. So we have Mafalda asking, you know, what's this book talking about? You know, what, what's this word? I don't get it. And, she's, and the mom answers, it's the living. Ah, okay. So why isn't this written in English? Or why isn't it written in, uh, in Spanish? So the point is the comics use language that we actually speak in. Like we don't, we don't use textbook language when we talk. And um, this is an example of, of how comics do that. And if we scroll to the next, we have an English language example. Okay, here's a, here's a little thing. Comic book, comics and comic books and comic strips use colloquial language or language that native, speaker, native speakers use in real conversations. And then here's an English version here. So this is a comic by Gary Larson. Uh, it's called The Far Side. And you have two spiders sitting here, and they have a web drawn across the bottom. And one spider says, if we pull this off, we'll eat like kings. And the verb pull you know, means to, to pull something, right? to, to drag something or to, to move something. But in this, this um, use, it means to succeed, which is not a, not, if you looked up a definition of pull, you're not going to get that definition. But this is the way we actually use the word. And so this is how students are going to learn language the way we actually speak. Um, and here, I guess the spiders are going to have ch child for dinner. Um, okay. And then lastly, you know, all, all the comics in general, when you bring comics into a classroom, uh, they're just fun, plain and simple. You're going to bring in a a new, new, exciting uh, resource. Um, I think students are really excited. I've noticed when we've gone into classrooms, um, you know, comics in general are not usually allowed in a classroom. So when you bring in comics, you're going to bring in something new, something um, that they're not expecting, and that wakes up your classroom and uh, gets them, you know, and, you know, excited to learn. So we're just putting up right now. If you have any questions, make sure to ask me. And then let's do a quick activity. And um, and then if you have questions, we'll answer those questions. What we're going to do is an activity called um, fill in the balloon. And this is real simple, real easy to do. Uh, let me get let me get an example here. So all you need is a say a comic book page, which we'll have plenty of in Zonk Comics when they come out. Or you could go to your newspaper stand 
or and grab a Condorito. You could grab uh, anything out of the newspaper. Uh, you might have some comics lying around. A lot of you are out there using comics already, so you might have some comics. You need some whiteout, some liquid paper, and all you're going to have to do is take the whiteout and erase the letters. Okay? Let me see here. Where's the camera? Okay. You can erase the letters with your whiteout. And then what you're going to have your students do is fill in the bubbles with new text. That's one option. Or we've made a bunch of pages for you. Let's see, here's here's a comic strip drawn by me. What's with the, the, bubbles. the name of this? What do we call this? Gutter? This one's, um, what's this one called? Or another oh, one's... Uh, web. Web talk? Web, yeah. Fill right in there. the balloon? Yeah, fill in yeah, the balloon. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So fill in the balloon is one of the handouts, which you can see in the um, the dashboard that's on the right-hand side of your computer. Um, that That's where you can download this to your yeah. computer. But we'll show this in the screen here. Yeah. Do we have a version of it to show up there? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So you guys can use this. You know, you photocopy it, use it in your classrooms. It's a freebie. Um, kind of a takeaway from the uh, the workshop for you. Let's just get the image up there so you can work along with us. Uh, not showing the complete image. Let's maybe just do it on the camera. Okay, be better. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. All right. So. You guys all have you all you all have the um, you all have the handout that you can download as a shared document there, and you can see up here. What I find is useful is to actually write letters into each. Yeah, that's good there. Writing numbers into each of the word balloons rather than um, having the students actually write into the word balloons. And for this, I like this because there's more room. So what you have your students do is you project this on the wall if you have that capability or you can uh, photocopy this and give it out to your students. But you don't need to, and that's the point of, of using the numbered system, is that you don't have to actually, I know that resources are tight, so you don't actually have to spend a lot of time photocopying. You can just project this on the wall or maybe have one copy that you show the students. And you have the students write down one for the first guy who's gonna speak, two for the next person, three and four and five and six in this case. And basically what you have your students do is fill in these word balloons making a conversation and then once they've filled in the word balloons you can then have them do a role play activity and that's where you can have the students stand up in class and uh, actually you know act out the story they've created one way to make this specific for your um, classrooms is say you're working on I don't know past tense verbs you can then say you have to use past tense in this in this project or if you're working on certain vocabulary you have to use words from the kitchen um, there's really no wrong answer, and I've done this all around Peru, working with students and teachers, and everyone loves it. And I've noticed also that the Peruvian teachers and students love standing up in front of people and acting this out. Should we try it? Yeah, let's do that. So we, we've uh, we've put one together. I even have a we have some props here to make it fun. Mike is going to be a, a a llama. I'll be a reindeer. Here we go. Oop, all right. We do this because we love you guys. <laughs> okay. So. All right. Here we go. So it goes, hey, Yama, what are you doing with that flashlight there? That? Oh, well, it's dark in here. <laughs> you forget I'm Rudolph. Show off. Okay, okay, I get the point. How's this for a bright idea? Ha, 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 ha. <laughs> so you got you okay. guys get the idea and I I there's the there's the image again. I've also been very impressed with the willingness of Peruvian students to uh, to get up and and act. It, sometimes it's it's harder to get children in the United States to do that, but here you guys are actors, thespians, very playful, which is a great thing. Yeah. So do you does anyone have any questions out there and the, on the right hand uh, dashboard if you expand it um, you should be able to see questions if you're not able to enter them here live right now you can send them to us by email the reloandes at state.gov or 
even better, if you put your questions on the Facebook group that Shane and John from Arizona State University created, put your questions there and we'll do our best to answer them. And that, that way everybody can see the questions and everybody can receive the answer to it. Yeah. Um, I also wanted to make sure that you're aware of American English. I, I showed this to you guys last time for those of you who could join. This is where you can find um, the Why English comic book that uh, Ben mentioned earlier. And in addition, hopefully we can get, um, someday we can get Ben's new comic up, um, yeah. Zonk. So we have Zonk here, which will be out in October. And th yeah, there will definitely be a digital version of it. And, um, and also a, you know, a, a paper version for free. And if any of you would like to uh, have access to that, let us know again on Facebook, on the Pronebec ASU site. That's a good place to let everybody know your thoughts. Um, so I would like to be the first to um, say thank you to Ben for joining us today for our webinar. Um, again, if you have any questions, let us know via Facebook or email, and um, we'll do our best to get the questions to Ben so that he can answer them. Yep. And I'm just going to give you... Is there a way we can stick a website for them to write down, or is there for the uh, the comics for class dot org? I can put it in the task bar up here. All right. So what is it? Um, here you go. Edu or comics for class dot org. Actually, I guess we can show it. To comics for class dot dot org. Okay. So if you look in the bar on your screen that shows you the actual website and this is so here's this is a good resource for you guys out there this is our workshop website and from this website you can a you can look at if you scroll along here if I, I can go into this website from there cool yeah so up here we have our, our teacher comics if you go on to here you can see all the work that your fellow teachers have been doing you see here these are all comics made by teachers in Peru in Peru and these are all, if you click on them, you open them up, they, may, they come into a PDF, PDF and you can um, print them out and use them in your classroom. So just the whole, a lot of times teachers say, I don't have any comics. Well, this website is filled with comics made by teachers. Um, over here, classroom activities. Here, um, this thing is really fast. Um, so here are a bunch of classroom activities that we uh, we use in the workshop. And you can see on here, here's the fill in the speech balloon activity right here, which has a different page that you can use. But you guys, since you've attended this little webinar, you get a, a new one from us. And then down here are comic book templates. So you can use these. These are kind of paneled out pages that don't have any uh, images in them. Feel free to use those. And then finally, if all of you who are interested in using comics also, I put together sort of a resource clearinghouse on um, websites that use comic books. And so this first section here is comic strip generators. And this is where you can make comic books online. So you don't have to draw. Uh, all of those are really great. And here's resources for using comics online. And I mean, in, I mean, sorry, in the classroom. And these are going to be free comics online. This Donna Young does a lot of work with uh, using comic books in her, uh, she has a lot of templates and stuff you can use. And then finally, I just put a couple online comics that I like a lot that you can read uh, for free online. And then also down here is, is just a, a, the, the link to the uh, State Department English Learning Site and also a link to Trace Effects, which is the uh, video game, which is not a comic, but still really cool. So I just want to show you guys that. And that's also where you can find information on Zonk. That's where it's going to be coming out. So. All right. Okay, thank well, you. Yeah. Thanks so much, everybody, for joining us. And hopefully we can have Ben back in the future. We plan to have uh, our next webinar with a different speaker in August. We'll send out um, notification of when that is. And you'll need to register for that if you'd like to attend. And we definitely hope to see you there. So thanks, Ben. Thanks, all of you guys. And uh, have a great rest of your day and a good weekend. Take care.